Hey everybody, welcome back to another daily drop here on TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and the topic today: Carolina basketball national championship game tonight. No, the Tar Heels obviously are not in it. They were this time two years ago when they played Kansas, had a 15 point lead at the half and lost. They were very close to winning that one. That would have been the program seventh. But what I want to hit on here isn't about UConn and Purdue, which I think will be a really, really interesting game. But it's about the fact that as much as Carolina fans are kind of iffy if they want to watch, sometimes they don't they stop watching the tournament when the Tar Heels lose. Whatever. That's your choice. I'm not going to tell you to watch the game. I'm not going to do any of that. But what I am going to say is as much as it, hurts or as much as it sucks or whatever however you want to describe it that the Tar Heels didn't get further than the Sweet 16 didn't get to Saturday get another crack at UConn not playing in the title game Monday night there's so much for Carolina fans to be grateful about the program that they root for has played in this title game 12 times in the past second most all time UCLA's done it 13 times. They won 11. They lost two. They lost one and they've lost uh, three. They lost one in 75. They lost in 80, which I think was scrapped, vacated. And then they lost one in 2006 to Florida. So I guess that would be 14 for UCLA. Carolina's been in 12. And what's interesting is the Tar Heels have been in three of the last eight national championship games, losing to Villanova at the buzzer in 16, beating Gonzaga in 17 the next year, and then two years ago, of course, the loss to Kansas. I have actually covered the last five Carolina championship games on Tuesday in the Daily Drop. I'm going to rank those five. I'm going to rank the five Carolina teams that have played in championship games that I've been there and covered. So that'll be a lot of fun. I don't even know how, what the order is going to be. I haven't done it yet. I'll do it when I actually record it. So that'll be a little bit fun. I will record that after this one, which is running on Monday. So I really wanted to lay it out there for the Carolina friends that I have. I've, I've had to tell a healthy handful here in the last couple of days, because they were, struggling with whether or not to root for NC State. I don't wear any of the hats for the teams in the league. I thought it was great for the ACC to get the 10th place team in the Final Four. And the 6th place team was in a regional final. To tell the Seth Davises and the John Rothsteins and all those guys to stick it, basically, because they dissed the league. The national narrative about the league was completely wrong. And NC State and Clemson helped prove that. They tried to use Virginia. Eh, didn't matter. Okay. So regardless of how you felt about NC State, I'm sure a lot of Carolina fans, after getting a whole week of NC State love in the media, probably got to the point where they were sick of the whole thing. And it made Carolina not being there even, even worse. And that's what I've heard from some of my Carolina friends. And what I told them is, guys, you've been in three of the last eight. You've won three this century. You've won six overall. You've been in 12 title games. And guess what? UNC is the only program in college basketball that has been in a Final Four each of the last nine decades, but also played in a title game in each of the last nine decades. And oh, by the way, those are the only full decades in NCAA tournament history. It began in 1939. So that's not a full decade. That's one game, one year. Carolina lost the title game in 46 by, I think, three points. Carolina won the title in 57, 32-0. Only two teams in college basketball history, 32-0. Best records ever in Division I basketball, 57 Tar Heels, 1976 Indiana Hoosiers, Bob Knight's first national title team in Bloomington. Carolina Lost the title game in 1968 to UCLA in Los Angeles at the sports arena. They lost the national title game in 1977 to Marquette in Atlanta. They had a lead. 13 minutes left. Dean goes into the four corners. A lot of people will tell you 
that's maybe one or two times that Dean Smith made a serious mistake that was costly in the end. 1981, the day that Reagan was shot, the Tar Heels lost to Indiana 63 to 50, I think it was, in Philadelphia. The core of that team returned the next year, added a freshman by the name of Michael Jordan, and they beat Georgetown in the national championship in New Orleans, Dean Smith's first of two titles. It was 11 more years before the Tar Heels reached the title game again, 1993, in New Orleans again, Carolina, led by Donald Williams, the MOP, Eric Montross, George Lynch, tremendous depth, tremendous length, maybe the best half-court trapping Carolina team ever. They beat Michigan in the title game for Dean's second national championship. It was 12 more years until before the program returned. Roy Williams' second team back at UNC, a group that got its own form of redemption after – the the tumultuous first couple of years uh, for some of those guys and first year for some as the Matt Doherty period just didn't work out. That happens. Didn't work out. No negativity about that anymore. I think everybody is long past that. But that group, the seniors on that team, Melvin Scott, Jack Emanuel, and Jawad Williams, they were 8-20 as freshmen. Losing his team in Carolina history, worst team in Carolina history, and it was a tough time for those kids. And when they beat Illinois for the national title in St. Louis, 47,000 people in the Edward, I think Edward Jones Dome, 40,000 of them were Illinois fans because it's right across the river. First three guys I talked to in the locker room that night, Jack Emanuel, Jawad Williams, Melvin Scott. There was another form of redemption in Carolina basketball. Then you speed up to 2009, the Tar Heels' next appearance in a title game, and kind of a weird way, a little redemption there too, because if you remember in 2008, in the Final Four against Kansas, it was 40-12 to 12. Jayhawks. Tar Heels nearly caught them. Jayhawks pulled away. That club the next year blitzed through the tournament, blowing out Michigan State in the title game. Tyler Hansbrough, Wayne Ellington, Danny Green, Ty Lawson, loaded team. They win the national title. Carolina returns in 2016. Lose at the buzzer to Chris Jenkins in Villanova the next year. Another form of redemption. The most well-documented and best-known redemption story was the 17 team. They beat Gonzaga to win it all. And, of course, 2022, the most unlikely title game appearance ever by a Tar Heel team, an eight-seed got to the championship game and in its path ended Coach K's career in the national semifinals two days before they lost to Kansas. So my point is, by rattling off all of this stuff to you guys, it's been a rough week plus for North Carolina basketball fans. No doubt about it. But guess what? You sit here on championship Monday, or if you're wa- listening or watching this after the title game has been played, Take solace in the fact that only one other program has done this more than North Carolina. And they've only been in, what, four since 1975. That's 50 years. One of them was vacated, and they've only won one since then. That's UCLA. So who's Carolina's peer when it comes to playing in the national championship? I would argue there isn't one. Now, maybe it's UConn because of what UConn's done in the last 25 years. You could argue that. I'm talking more last 50. But if you want to squeeze in the last quarter century, it's hard to argue against UConn. But Carolina's played in a lot of title games. I mean, UConn doesn't get to the Final Fours frequently. So, North Carolina fans, I know it sucks. I know you're tired of hearing about the great NC State story. And it is a great story. It would be remembered for a long time. And you didn't get as far as Duke. But you've done this more than anybody else except one school, and they haven't done it a whole lot in the last half century. So I think that ought to make you feel pretty good. Stick it in your back pocket and stick your nose toward next season because there's a chance the 2024-25 Tar Heels have a chance to do this for the 13th time in school history. We'll deal with that as we get a lot closer to the season and we – see what the roster looks like for next year. But there's a chance it could be that kind of team 
again. If you like the fact that Carolina is second all-time in title game appearances, click like on this video. If you didn't know that and you're surprised to know it and you feel a little bit better about things now, go ahead and click like on this video. Make sure you share it with all of your Carolina Tar Heel friends, especially the ones that have been moping around the last week or so and don't know we're here. Let them know we are here so they can subscribe. You subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you get updates every time we post a video. And also a quick reminder, we have a website that has a thousand times more stuff than we put on these videos. It's tarheelillustrate.com. For the price of a drive through meal, like a number one pretty much anywhere, you can be a, a subscriber to our site, just eight thirty three dollars for a one-year subscription. Head on over there now with the portal stuff going on. You don't want to miss it. We don't do a lot of portal pods. Most of that information is premium, and it's on our site, and it's staying that way. Anyway, I'm AJ, and I appreciate you guys stopping by.